So I've, I've been doing a series of videos on 3D printing nylon. Uh, one where I made a 3D printed car part out of nylon and did some just generic testing showing how impact resistant it was. I also did a video on how to build a dry box that you can use to keep your filament dry while 3D printing nylon. That That's a pretty key uh, tool you need when you're 3D printing with nylon just, just because it's so hydroscopic. It absorbs so much moisture while printing that by the end of a long print, nylon will have absorbed a significant amount of moisture from the air, especially if you're in a humid environment where print quality can start to deteriorate. And if it doesn't deteriorate on, during that print, over time, the more exposure it has, the worse it's gonna get. Now there's ways to dry it, and I have videos on that down below as well, but long term, you really need to build a dry box. Watch that video. So you have the dry box, you have nylon filament, what's next? Really, the next big hurdle you're gonna hit is trying to get bed adhesion. And as many of you know, Bed adhesion is really everything with 3D printing. If you can't get the part to adhere to the bed, you really can't print anything. So there's a lot of different uh, techniques that people use or attempt to use to try to get nylon to stick to the bed. Now, first thing is it doesn't seem like it's particularly compatible with your standard PEI bed sheets that a lot of printers are using. So originally I had printed bridge nylon using my Prusa i3 Mark II and on a PEI bed sheet and used uh, glue and had to use a brim and even still the part warped a little bit but it was functional it worked so uh, I went in in pursuit of better bed adhesion and one one thing you hear is that uh, at least Tommen recommends a borosilicate glass plate with glue on it I tried that and still had issues with warping typically I use Elmer's washable school glue stick, the disappearing purple kind. Uh, and that works great with ABS and with uh, PLA, and I've had good luck with it. But with the nylon, I was still having issues. So I contacted, I was actually trying to print, this is uh, Nylon X from Matter Hackers. I was actually trying to print with this. And so I contacted them because they recommended the borosilicate glass with a glue stick. And I asked them, you know, I'm having trouble, what do you recommend? And they actually gave me a recommendation for this craft bond, which is another glue stick, essentially. But this is uh, extra strength, permanent bond, it says. And uh, you can get this at like uh, craft stores, basically. Um, it's almost exactly the same size, it's just a slightly different formulation. I suspect this is better for uh, materials like nylon because it's meant more for, for fabric and crafting. So they also gave me even more specific directions than just applying a single layer like I typically do with the, with the purple stuff. They recommended four to six layers in alternating directions. So you'll start one going horizontal and then one going vertical. But then you need to, not only do you need to do multiple layers, you need to wait and let each layer dry. So we're talking a minute to three or four minutes for each layer to dry so you're not simply wiping up the glue you just applied uh, in when you're going the different direction. So this application of glue takes 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes before you're ready to use the bed. Um, and then I tried printing with it multiple times and it really doesn't work beyond one application. But it does work pretty well for that first application. In fact, so well I almost had trouble getting the prints off on occasion. So if you want to go, if you have a boral silicate glass plate on your bed and you've got uh, access to a craft store, you can pick up this craft bond. I don't think it was hardly any more expensive than that. It was less than five bucks, I believe. I'll put a link. I believe you can get this at Amazon. There'll be a link below where you can purchase this. Uh, in general, I'm really pleased with how the Nylon X printed. It has a very clean surface. Uh, it you know, the, the texture of it makes the layer lines really disappear. It almost looks more like an injection molded part, especially when you're talking about in the Z-axis. So, I wasn't real happy with having to apply this mu that much glue and wait that long between changing and doing different prints. So one thing I've heard is that nylon sticks really well to Gerolite. Gerolite can be purchased from McMaster Car. Uh, and other probably industrial warehouses. I found a few other websites that had it, but McMaster is relatively close to my house and I often go up there to pick up supplies when needed. So uh, I found a thin sheet of this. If you read online, there's a lot of guys that have tried printing nylon and Gerolite and it might be tempting to just replace your normal glass build plate with a thicker sheet of Gerolite. You can get them up to a quarter inch thick or even thicker, I believe. 
that the price goes up significantly. But the problem with that is, Gerolite is like a laminated material, and it's not in its own right particularly flat. And obviously, you know how important a flat build plate is to getting your print to stick. So one of the preferred methods, it seems, is to buy this thinner Gerolite and then laminate it to something flat, either a piece of machined aluminum like a Mike 6 plate, or in my case, I'm going to attempt to stick it to boral silicate glass because for my M2, I have many old glass build plates, some of them with Nick cinnamon things, some of them just are not perfect. Now, this sheet, I uh, don't remember the exact price, but I'll put a little thing here somewhere that tells you how much. It wasn't all that expensive, but the trick is obviously getting this to stick to the glass. So I did a few different trials. Um, one thing I purchased from McMaster was this plyo bond, uh, just kind of playing with filters and doing some searching, trying to find them a glue that would stick well between glass and composites, which is essentially what the Gerolite is, I found this, this plyo bond. Um, it was a little bit uh, complicated to apply and it requires setting for a long time and it took me a while to find the directions. Generally though, this didn't work all that well. As you can see, it it's coming right off. So this was kind of my test piece. I cut small sections out and attempted to apply it to the build plate. I went to the hardware store and looked for some different epoxies that I might be able to use. So I purchased some JB Weld Clear Weld. This uh, actually recommend, is recommended for plastics, for fiberglass, and glass. Um, this has a nice little mixing container. The other one I went with is this Loctite uh, Go To Glue. I think I'm saying that right. Um, this should be available from Amazon as well. I'll have a link below. Well, actually, it's repos repositionable for five minutes, which is what I was kind of looking for, and it, and it takes a set in 30 minutes. So this is also recommended for glass, plastic, stone, uh, other materials, wood, that kind of stuff. So uh, I tried both of these as well. Uh, one thing I was looking for is something that I could spread out with a paint spreader because I know I wanted to get a nice even coat uh, no bubbles or bumps and uh, I went ahead and applied it to these little samples here the JB Weld it has adhered particularly well um, but it was a little bit harder to spread out and get it evenly coated um, it was a little tackier as soon as I started to apply it this Loctite on the other hand had a uh, much uh, better consistency for spreading with the roller and I found that it was really easy to spread out evenly and then apply a nice even pressure. I like the set time on this. It gave me uh, some time to work with it where this JB Weld cures within one hour is where it's at full strength. So you really don't have a whole lot of time to work with this. So I wasn't able to get it spread as well as I wanted to. I don't know which of these is, is perfect or if either one of these is perfect, but I was able to get some pretty nice prints out of this. And the nice thing is, is you don't even have to use a heated bed. So you just heat the extruder up, get it ready to go. And in fact, I would recommend not heating the bed because I don't think either one of these is recommended for, for uh, higher temperatures. Um, and in fact, if you look at the Mark Forge 3D printer, which prints exclusively with nylons and, ex and they use this carbon fiber nylon of their own brand called Onyx, um, they print on a Gerolite surface uh, laminated to a piece of aluminum, a very very precisely machined sheet of aluminum. 
and they have no bed heater. So really there's no, no need for it. Uh, the, the surface on this is uh, reasonably well textured and uh, the parts stuck very well. Uh, you basically give it a quick wipe down with isopropyl alcohol and then a very light coat of purple glue stick is what I have found works best. Uh, and at that point you're ready to go. There's, like I said, no heating in the bed and uh, you just wipe off the glue stick and put on a fresh layer and it works pretty consistently every time. Uh, Gerolite, I think, is a, is a good solution, especially on a printer where you can easily remove the bed surface uh, and make changes uh, to the bed that way. That's what I kind of like about these boral silicate plates. They're flat and you can adhere Gerolite to them. You could have one with PEI on it. You could have one that's just plain glass with glue stick, as I often do. Uh, one trick I found in Simplify 3D, and I'm sure this is in Cura and Slicer as well, but one, one nice trick I found is to take uh, when, you, when you've got this build plate, and this is a 32nd of an inch Gerolite on here, when you've got your build plate with it laminated, is to go ahead into your Simplify 3D settings and change your Z offset. So you can offset all your G code by a 32nd of an, of an inch. So that way when you go to home your machine and you start printing, you can uh, start at that, that layer and account for the Gerolite. On my M2, my machine homes in the front left corner and uh, when it does that it actually is looking for that switch and I didn't want to adjust the switch for Gerolite because I want to use it for other things as well so I just cut a little notch when I laminated uh, when I when I laminated the Gerolite so that in the far left corner the the nozzles would not crash into the Gerolite uh, once I did that the machine moves up and it moves over and it uh, does its little purge and when it moves back uh, it at that point has accounted for that uh, Z0 offset that we put into our Simplify 3D settings and you're ready to go. Um, really this is makes nylon just that much easier to print. Um, McMaster Car Ships, uh, there's a link down below for buying that. Uh, certainly this go-to glue has worked pretty well. If I find out there's a problem I'll make an update. Uh, if you are not already, follow me on Instagram and uh, Facebook. I'm actually pretty active on both of those platforms with the safety glasses required content and uh, if, uh, if I have any issues, that's the first place I'll share it, certainly. You'll see a picture on Instagram where it's starting to come off or something like that, or I'll make a post about it. If I find a better glue or some other application, I'll try to make another video about this. Uh, I'm hoping to come up with some kind of cool print that I can show off the strength of this carbon fiber nylon, something that's really, really pretty neat. Uh, if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear it. Put it in the comments below. Uh, uh, this is kind of cutting edge stuff, I feel like. This is where 3D printing is going, these hybrid materials, these super strong materials, uh, making end use parts, making things more than just uh, you know trinkets for your shelf. So uh, I got some cool ideas for this stuff, but I'd love to hear your ideas. What, what should I try to print? What should I test with? Uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up and I'll keep making more content like this. Uh, this, was, this was a fun one doing all the experiments and testing with this. Um, Please share, and uh, if you're not already subscribed, certainly subscribe. I've got a lot, of more, a lot more ideas for the safety glasses required content. So thanks again, and I uh, hope you like this and, and learned something new about 3D printing.